cloud gaming and how Intel's delivered the latest and greatest experiences and Intel and end-to-end -end Intel solution. Uh, basically what we've done is we've set up uh, cloud gaming from a streaming service company called Play Giga. Uh, they're providing the content that we see here, which is a title called Tomb Raider. And basically on the left-hand side, we have a simulated LTE network that's uh, experiencing about 100 milliseconds latency, 50 to 100 milliseconds, which is typical. On the right-hand side, uh, we have a 5G network that's delivering from a KB Lake G platform. Uh, that same that same rendering, but it's dropping down to about a five millisecond latency. So it's a dramatically reduced latency dr uh, reduction. So what it amounts to is you've got a really choppy experience on the the LTE simulated network because again that 50 to 100 millisecond latency is okay, yeah, a yeah. lot of delay, a lot of choppiness. And then you step over to that Intel solution on 5G. Seamless, beautiful, no frames dropping, much easier to play, and a much more enriching experience. That's awesome. And how's, how's it compared to say like Shadow, that type of thing? I'm not familiar with Shadow as much, so I can't I can't comment on that. Yeah. But but GeForce Now, yeah. Yeah, got it, got it. I, I haven't I haven't seen how uh, this specific application runs on 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 that type of application, but uh, I do know just making that hop again from from the LTE to over to 5G. Uh, Makes a really big difference. A, an incredible experience. So we should, should we upgrade our phones now then? I'm hoping that, yeah, and optimistically we can start moving over and see some early adoption on cell phone side uh, to start making 5G part of the mainstream. This is running, basically hosting the content that you see here. So there's no VCA accelerator card, there's no, there's no dedicated uh, GPU from it, so it's all being hosted on this device. So yeah. you said the KB Lake, has that got the mega graphics on it though? It's, 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 got, it's, got, it's got integrated graphics, so. Okay. Yeah, so this is this is the device that's hosting, that's hosting the instances that you see. And the great thing about that is it's, it's a high density solution, so we can deploy this directly at the radio head to reduce the physical location uh, from the edge deployment of at radio station. So will this ultimately be like a monthly subscription type solution? Correct. So it'll be similar to like a Netflix. Uh, Play Giga is again the service that provides these titles. So we partnered with them to develop this uh, uh, solution around this. And yeah, it'd be basically a subscription based uh, service to access these gaming titles. They currently support, I think, 240 gaming titles. Awesome. So it's a pretty big uh, library as it stands right now. 50 clients ready to pull trigger something like that. Yeah, right now. nice, nice. Yeah, so yeah, so if you have questions about the service itself, uh, Sati here is with Play Giga, so he can answer questions about the service. Uh, but yeah, but we're, we're happy to, to bring this kind of collaboration to life. What type of compatibility and integration with um, MacBooks? So, well, they need to do like a Windows boot camp to boot into that solution, which is pretty much normal anyway. Yeah, okay. yeah. so on the Mac side, uh, yeah, I, I, think, I mean, you can, you can run this in a variety of applications and OSs. Uh, so, but really what we're trying to showcase is that it works on a, across a variety of ecosystems, um, but you don't need to invest a lot of resources because most of the render is happening on the cloud, uh, on, the, on the edge rather, uh, so you don't have to rely on that render occurring on the client. Okay. So, yeah. All right, so what do we have here? Oh, we have a couple of our newest um, systems from our OEM partners. We have our Acer Swift 7 and our HP Spectre Folio um, that is a, a unique two-in-one with a, a leather case that can flip into different modes. I like that. I like the, like the leather type case. Yeah, so you can flip it. You can have your traditional laptop format here where you have your access to your keyboard. If you want to watch movies or just use the touchpad, you can... Um, angle it and have it more in a, an angled mode and then if you want to lay it flat if you're going to use your stylus to take notes you can uh, have it in that mode as well that's great and what, what's the battery life on that um, I'm not exactly sure what the battery life is um, it does have Intel's low power display technology on it so it is the one watt panel oh, wow, um, nice. so okay. it does have a pretty good battery life um, on it as well it has also Intel AT, uh, LTE capability as an option okay, um, so, so you can nice. um, get one of, of those as well how much uh, RAM and uh, CPU does it have um, I don't know how much RAM it has. Um, it does have up to an Intel Core i7, our eighth generation processor in it as well. The 15 watt parts, eh? yeah. Correct, okay, yes. Nice. So hi. Yeah, hi. Hi, I'm Nicole with Intel, and I want to show you something that's cool in form factors and functionality this year with two-in-ones. So we have a two-in-one here, and it has an actual display, a five-inch display built into the keyboard. You don't lose your touchpad functionality with this. So you can actually pull up a YouTube video on screen, drag it down into this extended display, play your video down here,
here and then still continue to follow along and do your work up there so you can have your instructional down there and not have to have two devices to get that kind of functionality. That's great, isn't it? And how much does this cost? Oh, they don't they don't let me know the prices. They just tell me the cool stuff. <laughs> that's great. But I'm sure if you Google, you will you will find yeah, out. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. The pricing's going to vary, too. I mean, a lot of other Depending companies are going to absolutely. So I know Razer at one point, I don't even know if this made it past prototype, but you could take your phone. I think it was Razer, and they had like some external uh, chassis that would equip to it. But that wasn't nearly as cool as this. This is two separate things happen in, in synchronizing themselves together. This is a really, really uh, yeah. Really I like how you can drag it down onto the uh, bottom screen. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a true extended display, it really you know? Is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you can also, they have some built-in cool things like being able to play your music through it, pull up your calendar in it. They have some like home hotspot functionality that you can build into that screen as well. Wow. And uh, do we'll have any function, say, for gaming, if you're playing some game and you want some Oh, uh, that's, a good, that's a great question. I guess it depends if the gaming uh, application had an extended screen um, functionality in it. Beginning. Sky's the lemon with this. Right. This is brilliant. It's like a big DS, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is indeed, isn't it? So, what's cool about this guy, I gotta show you, it's cute. You can wake him up. <laughs> he opens up. And then you have your e-ink screen down here on the bottom. And what's cool about this is it can load different keyboards to it. So if you want different languages, different characters, you could have those on your keyboard. You can go into languages, and all these keyboards are loaded in with the, the different characters on them. Um, so uh, we could select something, you know, Japan perhaps. Okay, loading. Cool. I've never tried this in real life, so let's see how okay. this goes. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, look. Okay, language changed. All right, let's see, guys. We have now our Japanese keyboard. Wow, that's great, right? isn't it? So how cool is that? Well, this is great because you can sell one unit flat out globally. To different locations, yeah. Well, and how frustrating for people that, you know, non-Western cultures to, to have to conform to a keyboard or guess what G is or, you know, and this way to actually have that built in. It's really paying attention to, to different cultures. This is adapting to us versus us adapting to the hardware. Yeah, yeah. This is essentially kind right. of where the directions are ultimately going anyway. The technology shouldn't dictate the functionality. Right, right. The yeah. I like it.